Hello there and welcome to The Spoken Line, a three-part video series brought to you by Frederick County Public Libraries. I'm Mark Hatfield and I work for the Thermont Regional Library, but when I'm not found there in my role as the circulation supervisor, you can find me here in my studio working as a professional artist in my hometown of Hanover, Pennsylvania. So we are gonna be taking a journey together over the course of the next few videos and we are going to be looking at and delving into the creative process together. We're going to look at three different aspects which are all tied together. We're going to be looking at the materials of art making. We are going to look at the actual process of art making itself. And we are last but not least going to delve in a little deeper to the philosophical aspects of inspiration and in art. And that can be sometimes one of the more tricky elements. It can be daunting to look at a blank page and wonder what is going to happen. But I have found over the years, in the 20 plus years that I've been making art, that that is truly the magical part that just keeps me coming back for more. So I look forward to spending time with you all and hope that we can learn something together. Within the past year, I have been working primarily with smaller works. Uh, the paintings on the wall here are nine inches by 10 inches in dimension, and they are acrylic on museum mount. And museum mount is really just nothing uh, except for a board that you would use for matting completed artworks. It, it is basically an archival mat board, really. Um, and so I can cut this, I get them in sheets that are 32 by 40 inches, and I have a mat cutter, and I can cut them to whatever size I'm looking for. Most of what I've done over the course of the past year has been eight by 10, but I've started making some larger pieces uh, here within the past couple of weeks. So it's a nice way to go, it's very sturdy, um, it doesn't bend or warp too much when you're working with paint and um, once it's been, the, the surface has been primed, it really holds up. So you'll see on the studio wall here, there are two pieces that I've been working on for the past couple of days and they are resolved at this point and they're both complete and I feel really good about them. There's another piece here that's older yet um, that's probably about a month old, I guess, maybe. But I kind of live with them. I tack everything directly to the wall. I don't use an easel. I used to use an easel when I was a teenager on up to when I was probably in my mid-20s. Um, I actually used an easel when I first moved into this studio space. But once I put the wall board up in the, the studio, once I put the drywall up, I just started I like the ease of working directly on the surface of the wall, especially in this kind of situation. I use thumbtacks. I put the, the uh, museum mount directly up onto it, push in the thumbtacks. I can take the thumbtacks out and move the piece around. It just makes it really easy to, to deal with. So I like the what you could call the economy of working on the wall like this. It just makes everything um, flow for me. And I like to be able to move stuff around to different spaces in the, on the studio wall. What's not on camera is that I have three other pieces that are over on another portion of the wall. And I can keep those tacked up. They don't get in the way of what I'm doing. But they kind of inform how I go forward with paintings in the future. They also provide kind of a roadmap of where I've been, too. So... I like that aspect to it. I like to live with them. I like to kind of like digest what they are saying to me visually and it helps me to go forward as I paint more and more. So beneath the two works that I was working on for the past couple of days, I um, have another piece that was not so successful. Sometimes I try to just press through. I can run into a little bit of a roadblock with something. It happens uh, frequently in the creative process where you're working on something and it just doesn't seem like anything is going anywhere 
and you just keep pressing through and sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. And so, you know, you have to give yourself a break and realize that you're not going to make something great all the time and that's okay. You're always learning something from it and that's part of the reason that you're making art is that it's a learning process of how, what works and how to go about fixing um, a situation that you may feel is not very ideal. So the way I fix this is I just simply covered over it with the primer that I use to coat the museum mount. When you're making a canvas um, or if you're using paper or if you're using museum mount or mat board like this, you really want to use a uh, primer and you can get stuff through an art supply store, what's called Gesso, or you can um, just go to a hardware store, which is what I do. I go get the stuff called Bullseye One Two Three. It has a little bit of a shine to it, a little bit of a sheen, and I like that. Um, and I can get like a quart can of it like this, and it lasts for a while. So that's a handy thing. It's it may be a little cheaper too. Not a hundred percent sure um, if you buy it that way versus buying it almost positive that it's cheaper than going through an art supply store. So it works the same. It, it is effective in the same way. And um, so that's one thing that you have to learn when you're making art is you have to make the decision about your materials and what you want to use and what you're going to use. And, um, you know, sometimes that process is just a learning curve. I've used things before that were absolutely detrimental and didn't work out on the long run. You know, like the paint would start to crack or um, it would start to yellow, things of that nature. And so that sometimes, you know, you can read about it, you can learn about it, but sometimes it's just a learning process. You know, we learn the hard way sometimes, right? you fail and it doesn't work out. So I've learned lessons and I don't break the rules so much when it comes to materials anymore um, just because I want these paintings to last. I don't want them to go away. Okay, so with this piece below, um, I have just simply tacked it up to the studio wall and what I would do to deal with the image that's still kind of coming through is I would actually just put another coat of primer on it, which I'm going to do right now. And um, I just use a one and a half inch to two inch brush and just dip it in to the primer and just coat it. It's nice when you work on the wall because you don't have to worry about the over splashing. It actually just adds another coat of paint to your wall, which is kind of handy too. So I try to fan everything out so that there's not so many uh, brush strokes that are visible. but. I don't really worry about that too much because I can sand it if I want to with sandpaper or I can leave it just as it is. So at this point, after I put another coat on, you can see that the image beneath has been veiled more. And so at this point, I, could, I feel pretty comfortable that I could start working on it again and work on it in a fresh way. Up till now, I've been showing you all the smaller works that I've been working on in the past year, but typically over the course of the past 10 years, I've been working on paintings that are larger like this one behind me. And actually this painting I did in the fall, I think I completed it like in September of this year. So I am still working big um, and I kind of mix it up with the smaller works and then work with the bigger ones as well. So this is acrylic on paper. I build a um, wooden structure underneath of it, which I make out of two by fours that I cut into two by twos. And then I use a subflooring wood material that I just get at Lowe's or whatever called Luan. I put that down for flooring 
it kind of like levels off a floor in a kitchen or a bathroom and then they'll put oftentimes you know either tile on top or whatever i use it for paintings and it works out re really well i then adhere paper to it i buy my paper in big rolls and i adhere it to the surface of the panel that i build and it makes a really nice presentation so this piece is 40 by 42 inches and it still is very manageable for me. I can flip it around, which is a habit that I do a lot of times. I'll work on something for a while and then I'll flip it upside down to see if I want to go a different direction with it. So there were many, many times that a painting started in one orientation and ended in a different orientation. Um, and this one, uh, quite honestly, could go either direction. But I think ultimately what I decided was that I preferred this position as a final painting and decided this is the way that I wanted it to be. So it's good to be able to jump back and forth and try different things and it makes things exciting and it keeps you pressing forward in your creative process when you do that. Many thanks for watching and coming along on this journey with me as we have delved into the process of art making. So be sure to take advantage of the many resources at fcpl.org. In addition to books from the Frederick County Public Library System, uh, you can also access many materials throughout the state of Maryland by using Marina, our interlibrary loan option there. And also one of my favorites that you can just preview online by way of FCPL's website is Canopy. It has just amazing films and documentaries about artists and art making. Um, additionally, there are online resources like Linda, Novelist, or Gail that can help you out, and they have some instructional videos there. So I hope that the many FCPL resources that we provide will spark an interest for you to create your own artwork, and that will also perhaps help you think outside the box a little bit and step away from traditional art making methods. Um, think about it and don't be afraid to try something new. That's what art is all about. And remember, above all, visual art should be enjoyed for its own sake. Art is language. It is the language of life.